Great to see you, Jörg. I hope everything is fine on your end. Absolutely, Sanjay. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you very much. So fantastic. So you're going to share with us the business model of Waka Chemi. But before you kickstart your presentation, may I ask you to quickly introduce yourself, please? Oh, happy to do that. Um, I'm with Waka uh, Chemi since the IPO in 2006, actually a little bit before that. Before that, I spent time uh, with uh, competitors of Wacker in sales functions and in M&A and controlling uh, uh, responsibilities. And before that, I worked with a bank. I studied in Mannheim University in Germany and in Canada. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Wacker Kimi. I'm going to take you on a very interesting journey. Uh, this is your typical German Mittelstand small company. It is a giant in everything that it does. Let's go there in a moment. So here's the presentation. Baka, it's all about cash growth and sustainability. And I'll touch all those points momentarily. So actually, you are familiar with our products. By the time you got into the office, you probably used more than, than a dozen of them. And when you sit in your room, we're probably all around you. So where, do we, where are we actually? You'll find us in your toothbrush, not just in the toothpaste, but also in the soft handle of the toothbrush. This is silicone. You find us in your shampoos. You find us in the heads of your shower head. We have a huge market share in that application. We're in, in tissues. We're in your towel. Rocker silicones are almost ubiquitous. And on top of that, we have paints and adhesives that keep the pigments on the wall and uh, loads of other interesting things. But let's go there in a moment, okay? Here's a, an overview of our portfolio. Um, you see, it's almost everywhere. This, which means it's difficult to pin us to a single selective industry. The biggest industry exposures that we have are in construction, in coatings and paints, adhesives and sealants, and energy transports. Our polysilicon division, then in renewable energies. Bakker has roughly 15,000 employees. That number is about to shrink as we're going through a very severe restructuring program about 10% of the employee population will be gone in the next two years. We have 24 production sites, and what's even more important, about 23 technical centers that we leverage to project know-how into the regions and to our customers, because that's where we make our money, selling engineering services by the kilogram. Here's what we do. Um, our largest business is silicone. Silicones are ubiquitous plastic, they're not the thermal plastic. Uh, they can withstand very high temperatures, but also very low temperatures. You can essentially find them on all ends of any given property spectrum, and yet those can be combined, which makes our silicones an ideal material to compete with any other kind of plastic. They typically win on usage, but tend to lose on cost. So if you've chosen silicones, you've chosen well, because then you have a good choice of properties that you, we, can, we can certify for you. Uh, we're number two in this market. Uh, following Dow DuPont and just ahead of uh, Momentum, who's now situated in Korea. Largely a global market, highly contested. The market consists essentially of a standards business and a specialties business. Our focus is on the specialties, and we use the standards to fill up our feedstock um, facilities. Next business, as we move uh, clockwise, is our biosolutions business which is an area where we are commercializing technologies and patents that we've collected over decades. Um, this is some protein folding, but this is also a very specific technology that allows us to get active compounds out of a, an E. coli bacteria uh, without having to go for massive filtration. So this allows for small lot production of highly um, efficient pharmaceutical materials uh, with high yields and high purity levels. We are also engaged in manufacturing mRNA for vaccine manufacturers. Now in COVID times, that is important. We've actually committed to about 100 million doses for CureVac already. And if necessary, we'll throw more money at it. Polymers is our second largest business. This is a business where we have huge market shares, also a very small value chain. This is essentially uh, acetic acid modified so in this industrialized uh, vinegar uh, modified with ethylene and it yields a water-based glue. So this is your no smell, high, highly competent paints that you put on the walls. Uh, so you can actually paint the wall and sit there and don't have to air it for, 
for, for weeks on end. We then take these glues, spray them, dry them, and they become an active ingredient in mortars and screeds. So this is what you typically call your CO2 avoiding smart construction materials. Our last business then is our polysilicon division where we both service the semiconductor industry with a large market share. We're actually the largest supplier into the semiconductor industry of materials where impurities are measured at impossible parts per trillion. And we also service the high end of the solar markets for the most uh, best performing and high end, highest efficiency solar modules and cells. Now let's look into what is it that we want to do? What is it that we want to achieve and what you should expect from us? We have grown this business after the IPO massively. We've internationalized the business, investing into new plans, building up sites in Korea and China and in the US. So this literally transformed a small Bavarian company into a global player. Extending the leverage phase means that we are, will continue to invest in the near future below depreciation levels, still a whopping 400 million euros, but for us, a severe reduction. How can we achieve all that? Well, the second part of this uh, title here is about growth in cash, so cash is what we'll get to in a moment. We we'll grow above the chemical production. Our, both, our, both our largest business, silicones and polymers, have averaging growth rates between five and 7% clearly ahead of the rest of the chemical industry. Focus on sustainability, that is a necessity and this is how we run our businesses. What you'll find is that the bulk of our processes are all circular processes where nothing is wasted. We try to get squeeze the most out of the raw materials that we use and that leaves um, no waste. Um, um, sustaining attractive margins across the cycles and aiming to earn our cost of capital and beyond uh, we'll get to that. And the key feature of Acker Chemie is this massive cash generation capability. This is a business that is over 100 years old. And in its 100 years, it's seen only two capital infusions, one in 1921 and the other in 2006. I guess that's rather right rare. So let's look into the CapEx. This is what we've done. We've, uh, through 2015, we build up our network of global sites, feedstock sites, upstream facilities, as we call them. Since then, we have <clears throat> increased the investment into chemicals, notably into the specialties area, where we have higher return on capital employees, um, employed, but also significantly lower capital requirements. Um, in the chemicals part of the business, we're investing significantly about depreciation. Um, in the other parts of the business, notably in the polysilicon business, we're investing significantly below depreciation. What you see down there is a list of projects and, and uh, only the bolt ones are upstream facilities, everything else is downstream. So what you can see here is that over time, we are shifting our uh, capex and our growth towards the specialty applications in our businesses. And that's really what we are. So here's a picture about growth. We could have actually taken this slide and prolonged it well into the 1960s. The growth rates would have looked rather similar. So relatively stable growth in chemicals, some volatility in the polysilicon business, um, which is given that this is a business that just exploded in size in the last 20 years, not unforeseen. Um, and largest growth actually happening in Asia. Um, major growth drivers for us, regional growth, going into the regions, spreading out the new technologies, innovation, constantly innovating new products, and substituting other materials. Those are the key drivers. Sustainability, a key feature for us. So uh, reducing redu reduction of CO2. We are, we've already done a lot, but you see we have still ambitious targets going forward uh, to reduce our CO2 specific uh, emissions by a third over the next 10 years. Um, driving improvements around the value, value chain. This is essentially how we do this and how we deploy, deploy this. We've set up uh, a facility where we, we can judge the impacts of our various products. Um, and we want to make sure that over 90% of our products uh, contribute positively to sustainability over the next 10 years, while at the same time reducing our footprint and working together with other people to leverage networks effects for generating for sustainable products that can help and support our customers. Sustaining attractive margins across the cycle, you see here, especially in chemicals, a uh, relatively stable margin profile uh, through the last years. Um, in 
polysilicon that's looking a bit different. Polysilicon was underwater because of unfair competition from China, uh, where our competitors get significant subsidies. Nevertheless, at the end of last year, we made it back into positive territory and the market seems to be stabilizing. So strong performance in our chemicals businesses. Um, again, this only goes through 2015 because before that we still held the electronic part of the business, which is now being sold. Cash generation, a big thing for worker. We are committed to paying dividends, but we're also a massive generator of cash. And you see that we've financed our expansion um, since over the last 15 years, essentially by ourselves, but also by leveraging customers and competitors' funds with joint ventures, with prepayments. Over 1.8 1 billion euros were collected from solar customers for polysilicon, which essentially paid for a new plant in the US. So strong investments, prudent management of cash, that's what Barclay is about. Let me sum this up. This is a highly dynamic company, a small business, but at the same time, a big business. Leading market shares in everything that it does. Competitive advantages from silicon-based integrated sites and operational excellence. We're clearly leaders in chemical engineering, market leading positions, superior internal growth, driven by innovation, but also sustainability in emerging markets. Let me give you an example. Polymers, for instance, just added a new growth layer with the EU Green Deal. We'll hear more about this when it follows. And transforming growth, high cash generation, focused on driving more specialty investments in the chemicals parts of the business, and we are committed to shareholder returns. With that, thank you for your interest. I'd like to invite you to peruse our website, www.vaca.com. And if you have more questions, please contact the IRT. Thank you. Thank you, Jörg. It was really good to have you on our seat 11 a platform. It was a very detailed and interesting presentation. I hope we will see you again to continue our VACA series with some product highlights over the time. Oh, certainly. And, and uh, you'll be surprised. Uh, you know, I, and I, I discover new things every other week. You know, it's really amazing. We have this great customer magazine. You can download this from our website. It's actually won a few prizes. Interesting stuff in there. That's what people do. Okay, thank you very much and have a good day. Cheers. Thank you. Hi there, since you watched this company video until the end, I'm guessing you liked the video. And that's probably because we work very hard to create the most engaging and added value content for you. If you're a company and want to find out how we at Seat 11A can make a company video with and about you, please email us at content at seat11a.com.